Hi, I'm Lexi Diamond, and I'm here with... Regina. And welcome back to The Late Night Tea Show. This is good tea. It is good. It's cheap. I got it from Walmart, too. It was nice. Yes. Okay. Cheap. Cheap. But plentiful. Plentiful. And delicious. <laughs> here with some tea at the Late Night Tea Show. So my friend Regina, she's actually a coworker of mine. She's a very talented makeup artist. Like, can you tell us a little bit about like the kind of work you've done? I know you've done like- Sure. Um, let's see. So um, we met working um, at the Matt Cosmetics counter and that was a company that I worked um, eight years with. And um, I started with them in Miami, started out of Bloomingdale's. I then transferred to a standalone store for them called Mac Aventura, where I had um, about 60 other coworkers. And it was really like kind of the highlight of my career with them. Uh, they were number three globally when I started with the brands. Girl. So it was a really fun time. Um, and then, um, you know, met the man of my dreams, got married, moved to Colorado, and here I am. Uh, transferred with the company, but I'm no longer there since. I've moved on to bigger and better, better things, things, and I'm currently um, getting into the business of cosmetic tattooing. So if you need uh, cosmetic tattooing anytime soon, hit yes. your girl up, okay? But be, I mean, beyond like makeup, for the everyday fellow, like you've done like some studio work too. I've done some studio work, yeah. So I've worked for NBC down in Miami. I've worked for Telemundo. Um, I've done some uh, live segments on um, an NBC show called, uh, I think it's like Today or whatever. It's something like that, whatever the local one is. <laughs> I guess it would be like the equivalent to Colorado and Company. Okay. Right? Like something like that. Okay. And, um, yeah, like I've worked um, on a few shows. I've worked some productions. I've done some fashion weeks. It's a good time. I'm about to do. I'm about to do Denver Fashion Week. Oh, girl! Yeah, so you need a backup that. makeup artist. Let me know. No, it's only more people. So yeah. Meanwhile, I've just worked in cosmetics for a while. So there's that. There's a start. And I'm a local drag queen. So get That's it. How the experience you need. Yep. So this year that we're doing this. This year that we're doing this year. So this episode is going to be the year 2006, and my movie choice is going to be Snakes on a Plane. <laughs> and mine is The Hills Have Eyes. Two very different movies. Mm -hmm. I picked mine for comedic purposes only. Like, let's be real, that movie was ridiculous. Like, yeah. they put Samuel L. Jackson... And even that couldn't, like, give it a serious tone. Like, it made it even funnier that he's, like, cussing, like... I mean, let's be real. Is there is there a role that man won't accept? You're right. You're right. Money talks. Hey. To that you man. You gotta get paid. Girl. Yeah, I'm sick of these goddamn snakes. <laughs> of these goddamn plane. Like, I was just like, what the... Did you know... Okay, so, apparently... I don't know exactly how the story goes, but apparently this was, like a story that was made up by a bunch of people on a message board. Like, literally the story of this... Really? Was on, I think it was, like, on Reddit or something. And, like, somebody said something, and then somebody said something else, and then they kept adding to the story, and just it kept getting ridiculous. And it got, like, a massive cult following until this massive group of people pushed to get a movie made, and they were the ones who wanted Samuel L. Jackson to be one of the main characters. That's awful. It's that it's just kind goes, of incredible. It's incredible that it just goes to show, though, that this movie was doomed to begin with. Just like, <laughs> like, the, like never under. It's the back to that thing. Never underestimate um, stupid people in large groups. <laughs> oh God! Yes. <laughs> oh my God! That should be on this cup it right is, here. Never is. underestimate yeah. dumb people in large groups. Like. <laughs> How did that become a movie? Like, how is that not a short? For real. And they had an entire movie out been, of it. That could have been a 10 minute skit. Yeah. And they made it into a movie. So basically, the storyline in the movie is that there is this witness that witnessed the crime. And so then they're going from Honolulu to LA to testify for this mob boss. So the logical thing that they do is they just fill the plane with snakes in order to kill this guy. Which... Kills everyone else, and but... And snakes were sneaky. Yeah. And they were like... It was graphic. I remember... Like, the only thing I remember from this movie, like, vividly, is when 
the girl with the operated boobs got bit on each nipple. Like... <laughs> I don't remember that. I saw this in the movie theater. <laughs> no, they came down from like, she's like in the, she's having... Like the, like the oxygen thing? No, she's having sex in, oh. in the like, um, airplane bathroom. And Joining then, the Mile High Club. <laughs> right, and yeah. then snakes come down and they're just like on her titties. Barbecue she sauce on my titties. She didn't notice? No, she's like going crazy. Like she's like this bimbo blonde and she's like... <laughs> It was, it was like great and stupid all at the same time, which is why I picked the movie. It's so. beautiful. It's it's amazing. I mean, and also a work of art. the director doesn't have a lot of like great movies, but two good movies that he did direct were Cellular, and uh, which is the action movie about the cellular phone, and then Matrix Reloaded, which I love the Matrix trilogy. So the fact that he had a hand in any of those movies is great for me. So. Good job. Good fight scenes. Yep. Matrix related. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, the year 2006. Yep. I was bright, young, and bushy tailed. <laughs> and, um, okay, scroll for you. I was probably single, newly single. Oh, I know. I worked at Best Buy at the time. I worked at Best Buy and I was in Geek Squad. Oh, wow. And Geek Squad? I was in Geek Squad. Girl! Yeah, I worked in, at Best Buy at the time and it was like, you know, 2006 might have been the time of my life. 2006, I think, was the year, one of the years that I had my Ultima. And let me tell you about this Ultima, guys. It was a 93 <laughs> Nissan Ultima that was all white. With, like, the most kick-ass hubcaps you've ever seen. And, like, it had, like, gold trim all over the car. And then it had this license plate in the front of it with a rose that said, A Touch of Class. <laughs> and I, I, purchased, <laughs> I purchased this vehicle with this. Actually, let me rephrase it. My grandmother... My grandmother what? purchased this car for me for eight hundred dollars from like one of her coworkers. <laughs> oh, yeah, my, that's because, amazing! Yeah, because my car, like, I I would actually drove a Mustang that I had rebuilt the engine on, and I burnt it out a second time. So like, <laughs> a second dire straight, I really needed a car. My grandma hooked it up, so it was a good time. Girl, two thousand six, right? Amazing. So, um, the movie that I chose was The Hills Have Eyes. Mm. Hence, blood, gore, nastiness. Um, Girl, you look good. Like, you look yeah. tragic in the best way. Tragic. Tragic. <gasps> yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very tragic. That's what I was going for. Yeah. And um, so, this film is directed by Wes Craven. Genius. So, it's magical already. Magical. I mean, this guy is truly a psychopath. So, we know that anything that he makes is going to be scary. Like, he's just, like, a classic, like, horror slasher film uh, director and he's just kind of like created the genre pretty much from the 80s forward right so like he just honored everybody that came before him and just like made it a completely different thing yeah no took I think it to a new level definitely right? a pioneer in For his sure. uh, in his field <laughs> if you will so in this movie um this family like breaks um this family stops at a gas station and um the I don't know where they're trying to get to. I think they're trying to get to LA or maybe there. So they're I know it's based in New Mexico. So um being that this was like one of the best years of my life, I clearly don't remember most of it. So <laughs> me, if I'm not super clear on the story and I'm probably jacking this all up. So I apologize for anybody that's a true horror. Real theme. reviews from real people. Whatever. It's cool. Um I remember that it's set in New Mexico and I think they're trying to get to California and the Attendant at the gas station's like, oh, you can take this shortcut through the hills to get there. In the middle of the desert? I don't think so. No, That's not my vibe. I'm good. I actually, um, when I was driving into Colorado, when I moved here, um, for like the first like hour, I was like, <laughs> the hills have eyes. <laughs> and your husband was probably like, are you okay? Yeah, like, I mean, he knew what he was getting himself into. <laughs> Like, oh, God. Uh, I'm one of those people that gets really scared when I watch I this it. movie. I fucking watched one, no, Wes Craven movie. I watched The Nightmare Before, or no, yeah, The Nightmare on Elf Street. I'm like, uh -huh, mixed up two movies. Yeah. I mean, it it really is a fantastical movie. Yeah, These things stay with you. <laughs> I fucking dreamt about that movie for fucking years. Years. Chucky was like the worst thing for me. It's not possible. Is that one of 
this movie I No, it's, I don't know. Uh, I don't I'm think not, so. I don't know. We're going to have to fact check that. But like... You know that doesn't happen. Like, Chuck, he's like no. a fucking doll. And I, I'm, like, petrified. Have you ever seen... Now, this pro- is definitely not a 2006 movie, so I apologize for bringing it up. But have you ever seen Congo? The no. movie Congo? Mm-mm. Okay, so I read the book, and then I, I was all excited. I saw the movie. I was, like, a child. I don't know why anybody took me to see this. And it was about these, like, white killer gorillas. And, like, I dreamt about that shit for years. It was terrifying. Like, I had one thing in my head, and then I saw the movie, and it completely fucked me up. So, oh, like, fuck. so like, ever since that, <laughs> horror's been, like, a real big thing for me. But anyways, so we're driving through New Mexico. We take the shortcut through the hills, and guess what? We find these pair of, like, crazy mutant incestuous um just like what you fucking, did like, or in the movie no this was in the movie okay <laughs> i was like, like wait that what is definitely like, not what happened. <laughs> i'm like that sounds like what happened in the yeah. movie like are you okay i drove straight to boulder we weren't playing <laughs> um cool cool so and then all of a sudden these um people that are in the car have to get themselves out of the situation where people are trying to eat them and i believe that they lost many of the people on the ride but um you know, there's always a happy ending. So, I'm sure there was light at the end of that tunnel. But it doesn't sound like no fucking happy ending. Mm, you know? You lost 50% of your company. So you survived. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they can cash in the life insurance. I mean, let's look at this from a very adult perspective, right. shall we? It's okay. Whatever. You probably hated some of those people. Anyway. Um, it's okay. Anyways, so I think it's funny that this movie is um, set in New Mexico. Because it's actually filmed in Morocco, which I think is kind of cool. Okay. Yeah, it was filmed in Morocco, which I think is, like, so exotic. Yeah. And, like, beautiful, right? I've never been there, but I've heard. Um, <laughs> uh, and they actually left the set there. So, like, if you, like, drive through that area of Morocco, like, the set's there, are, like, abandoned. It's the gas haven. And Girl, has, like, we should, we should these, go like, to Morocco just for that. Maybe. Like, you take this tea on the road. Girl, yes! <laughs> Late night tea show in Morocco. <laughs> And so, um, you know, the gas station was set to look like it was in America. So it has like all these American things in it. And it's like really creepy. Like I saw photos online. It's really kind of creepy. That's creepy. And just shout out to the makeup artists out there. Um, makeup artist for the movie was Greg Nicotero was his name. And he actually appeared as one of the characters, one of like the mutilated crazy guys. So that's too. cool that's it's like just like random no but that's kind of like goals though like if you're ma- yeah. if your makeup artistry can take you to make a cameo in a movie like you've made it like like that's definitely more than an extra like i bet his name was in the credits yeah more you gucci you gucci regina <laughs> <laughs> <The exit diamond. laughs> i love that movie oh my gosh well there you have it the year 2006 here at the late night tea show those were our picks P please 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 please. <laughs> please feel free to comment down below. Let us know what your picks would be for the year two thousand six. Make make sure that you subscribe. You tell all your friends. Give us suggestions on what other years are coming up. We are trying to go in order. So I mean, if there's a movie in two thousand eight or ten that you're like, please talk about this movie. We'll definitely consider it. So. We'll see you again tomorrow night for 30 Years of Halloween. And thank you for joining us. Thank you, Regina, for joining us. Thank you for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. And thanks. We'll see you later. See ya. Bye. Bye.